Hello everyone, my name is Kush Grover and I welcome you to this presentation on Semantic Abstraction Guided Motion Planning for SCLTL Missions in Unknown Environments. This work was done in collaboration with Fernando Barbosa and Professor Jana Tomova from KTH Royal Institute of Technology and with my PhD advisor Professor Jan Kretinsky. Let's start with a motivating example. Look at this office-like environment consisting of six rooms and a hallway. Let's put some tables in the rooms and some bins near the tables. We also define a semantic labeling of the environment. For example, if a robot is near a table, the atomic proposition T is true. This region is shown here with the dashed rectangle around the table. Also, each room and the hall has labels from R1 to R6 and H. A robot named Wally is deployed at an initial point and its objective is to empty all the bins. But it doesn't know the map of the whole environment and the location of the bins. It can only sense things inside a sensing radius. An observation Wally makes when it visits room 1 is that the bin is near the table. That makes him wonder whether that is the case in the other rooms as well. We use the same idea to exploit such semantic relations in the environment to guide future search. Let's look at an example how. We'll consider only two rooms for now. The robot starts building the RG graph inside the hall and till now we have only one state in the abstraction. When the robot adds an edge in the RRG graph which goes inside room 1, a transition from H to R1 is added in the abstraction. Now, assuming that it adds an edge going near a table, the transition R1 to R1T is added in the abstraction. Now computes a set of transitions which preserves the changes in this transition and adds them in the abstraction as maybe transitions, represented here in blue color. Now, Look at the scenario when it has visited the pin in room 1 and just entered room 2. The abstraction looks like this and it realizes that a path exists using these maybe transitions that would fulfill its objective. So it can now bias its search to find an edge which goes near the table in this room. A high level overview of our approach is presented here. An automaton is generated from the property and the RRG graph is built by sampling points from the environment. An abstraction is constructed on the fly including the maybe transitions. From the product of the abstraction and the property, bias is generated which is used for sampling more points in the environment. This gives rise to a feedback loop where the new samples help the biasing and biasing help generate potentially better samples. We compared three different approaches in our experiments. The first one is where the robot explores the whole environment first and starts planning once it has the knowledge of the whole environment. The second one is where it explores and tries to satisfy the specification simultaneously but without using the bias that we introduced. And the third one is simultaneous with biasing. We generated 100 random 6 room office like environments by randomizing the positions of bins and tables and ran all three approaches on them. The entries in the table are the mean and the standard deviation. In this table, we have results for see-through tests. That is, the robot can see beyond tests and add edges behind it. This could be the case if the robot was a flying one and is able to see beyond certain obstacles. As you can see, there is more than 50% reduction in terms of path traversed by the robot with the third approach compared to the first one. In the next table, we have results for opaque tests and here too, our biasing approach outperforms both the other approaches by some margin in terms of path length. We will now see a run of the first and the third approach side by side. On the left side, we see a run of the sequential approach which corresponds to the first column of the table shown in the last slide. Here, the robot is currently doing just exploration of the environment and it moves only vertically and horizontally because of the grid involved in frontier exploration methods. On the right side, a run of our approach is shown and we can see that after finding the first bin, the robot now visits other bins a lot sooner. As we can see in the left approach, the robot spends a lot of time just exploring the environment in contrast to the right side where the robot explores and searches at the same time resulting in a much shorter trajectory. To conclude this presentation, we gave an algorithm for SCLTL missions in unknown environments. We introduced a bias which helps in exploring and planning together at the same time 
and showed experimentally that our algorithm works quite well. Thank you for your attention.